Hey guys, Fox here. It's that time of the year to uh, get my games of the year done. Uh, so I'm going to do this a little differently this year. And I had a little bit of inspiration from one of my fellow uh, YouTube friends, and that's uh, Devil Made Pie. So I'm going to do like uh, multiple selections in this year. Um, what I'm going to do first is talk about my 10 favorite games that I played this year. Um, in no particular order. Actually, it'll be alphabetical. Um, after that, I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, best performance. And I'm going to talk about uh, voice actors because there were quite a few good ones this year. After that, I'll do best soundtrack score. So I'm a huge video game soundtrack guy. So I really would love to talk about these and uh, pick uh, my favorite uh, overall soundtrack. After that, I'll do best single track. So very specific songs from soundtracks. Uh, the ones that you don't mind listening to over and over again that were really good. Um, then I will hit up uh, best action game and best JRPG, uh, as those are the only two genres I played this year. <laughs> and finally will be game of the year. So without further ado, let's talk about the 10 games or my 10 favorite games that I played this year. First one didn't have a physical release, shockingly, but really loved it game. So I printed out some cover art here and that's Chained Echoes. Um, this is a uh, pretty much a single man team who made this uh, pixelated, um, almost like 16 bit uh, JRPG. Uh, wow, I'm not all the way through this one quite yet, but I'm very close and absolutely love this game. Uh, really cool turn-based combat mechanic with the uh, overdrive bar. Uh, really cool characters, uh, different stories that merge together. Um, very well done, cool. Um, they really added a lot of good effects like parallax scrolling in the backgrounds to the, uh, this guy did a lot of work. Uh, into quite an amazing RPG. I couldn't suggest this game more. And for something that's only 25 bucks, this is a spe spectacular game. After that, we have Elden Ring. I don't really have to talk much about this one as uh, this is probably on everybody's <laughs> uh, list. Uh, some of From Software's finest, I'd have to say. Um, really really big open world that's a lot of fun to go through lots of challenges uh really good surprisingly good soundtrack probably some of the best that from software has put in any of their games uh, in my opinion of the ones i've played at least um had a ton of fun playing this with friends um uh, i did say lots of challenges of course um i changed builds quite often so it really allowed you that freedom to change your builds quite uh, pretty easily I, I would say compared to the other ones uh, so uh, there were some amazing bosses in here and there was also a few horrible ones <laughs> that I did not like at all uh, and that was not because they were challenging is because I thought uh, I just didn't care for them at all uh, but it made up for it with some really good stuff in there. Uh, Elden Ring was top tier game. Next is God of War Ragnarok. Oh man, fantastic game. Talk about a game that will give you quite a bit of feels. Uh, you're gonna be emotional in this one, I have to say. Uh, but they stepped it up in this one over 2018. I think the overall story and uh, character development was uh, superior to the last one. Um, the combat, I think, was more refined, a lot more enjoyable for me. Uh, as a guy who typically struggles with action games like Elden Ring, I'm not particularly good at them. Um, this one, I had an easier time. Uh, going through uh, so much so that I did get the platinum um, Bear McCreary is returning for the soundtrack on this one and <laughs> does a dynamite job uh, I'm sure we'll be talking about that one later 
Next is Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. Um, I played Violet. And I have to say that Pokemon Violet is the first Pokemon game that I have enjoyed all the way through in quite some time. Um, nah, it's been since the DS era that I enjoyed a Pokemon game quite as much as this. Uh, now, that's to say it, it did have quite a few uh, flaws. And one thing I'd like to say is it's probably the best uh, unpolished Pokemon game that we've ever gotten. <laughs> Uh, lots of fun. Uh, the writing mechanics on the uh, Pokemon were quite fun. It allowed for nice quick traversal of a semi-open world environment. And all the new Pokemon were quite a bit of fun and I enjoyed using them. Um, usually I usually default to like a uh, evolution team, but uh, this time I used quite a bit of the new Pokemon. I thought they were uh, a lot of fun. Um, I used and used the starters uh, for a, most of the game. I ended up dropping them out of my final team, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Next is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge. I was really looking forward to this one. A new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles beat em up game in the same style as like Turtles in Time. Hell yeah, sign me up. I absolutely love those. So, and this one was done extremely well. Very, very good pixel art going on in this one. And the cast of characters that you get to play with, amazing. Up to six players at once, although I wouldn't really suggest it because it gets a little chaotic on the screen. But uh, there's your starting cast at the top there with April, the four turtles, and Splinter. Uh, but if you beat the game, you can also play as Casey Jones. Badass. Also, really good uh, battle mechanics. Like you had all kinds of different combos you could do, uh, you know, and the special moves. And the story was rather enjoyable. Um, this was a great nostalgia trip to Ninja Turtles of old, as far as video games go. Great game. Here's one that I was waiting for to come out for quite a while, and that's Trails from Zero from the Legend of Heroes series. I um, really, really wanted to experience the Crossbell arc from this, uh, the Trails of games. And I'm so happy that this finally got a proper translation for the English speaking community. So I was thrilled to play this. Uh, it was a good Trails game. Great combat, uh, good soundtrack, uh, an engaging story, and uh, a very well um, built up world in Crossbell. So with that said though, it's probably one of the uh, weaker Trails of games in my opinion, um, but it's still a very worthwhile playthrough. It's not terribly long. It's not like a Cold Steel game. So uh, this one can easily be enjoyed in under 40 hours. And uh, I really enjoyed uh, learning more about uh, Lloyd, Ellie, Randy, T.O., uh, that cast. It's excellent. I, and I cannot wait to play Azure because I hear that one's quite good. Next is Unpacking. This is a limited run release, so it came with a nice little cardboard sleeve, but uh, uh, this one surprised me. This was oddly comforting to play, and it had a very unique story to it, as it was told, told the life of one person through them moving and unpacking in different uh, uh, homes. A very unique way to tell somebody's life. I had a lot of fun. It was very calming and relaxing to play through. Really good visuals, because it was all pixelated. Um, but, I don't know, it was colorful, very calm soundtrack. Uh, and it was really, really unique game. I would highly suggest this for anybody. And shockingly, <laughs> I didn't think this was the case, but uh, uh, my kid really enjoyed this game. And I've heard from other friends that their kids also enjoyed this game. So. Unpacking. 
Up next was a surprise, and that's D-Lit and Wonder Labyrinth. Um, <laughs> I didn't think I would see another Record of Lotus War game come out. Um, played the one on the Dreamcast, and that was a uh, pretty good time. But this one is more of a <laughs> homage to uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And was done super well. This was a ton of fun to play and really reminded me of Symphony of the Night, but I kind of enjoyed the mechanics in this one more. Um, it's a Metroidvania and you get to do, you know, upgrades. You find uh, different powers, different weapons and armor. You get to level up. Um, so it was a very, very enjoyable game. And I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite uh, Metroidvanias. And last we have Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Uh, this one was rather amazing. And uh, I think it's safe to say this might be my favorite of the whole trilogy. I'm still letting it sink in because sometimes my thoughts on the Xenoblade games changes over time. Uh, Leo would know that best. And I think this one, uh, Open World, was more enjoyable to explore. Um, but the thing that I didn't really enjoy a lot in this game was that you didn't really, uh, you know, change what creatures you were on. You know, the giant world that you're living on. Uh, this one was more focused on the world of the people who inhabit it. So it really centered around uh, people who only had a lifespan of 10 years. And they're trying to figure out what they want to do with their life. And exploring everything and finding out what's really going on behind the scenes. It's a really, really enjoyable game. Um, this is another game that will... Uh, hit your uh, feels quite a bit as the characters in this game are extremely well developed. I loved experiencing what they were experiencing and when tragedy hits it really gives you an emotional uh, response and for me in a game uh, similar to what God of War Ragnarok gave to me is that it hit me emotionally and that, to me, tells you a very, very good story. So, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Now, up next is best performance in a video game. And I'm particularly talking about the voice actors here and how well they portrayed the character and how I thought character was done in the video game and uh, the, these ones did a very very good job and up first is Christopher Judge as Kratos from God of War Ragnarok he already did a phenomenal job in God of War 2018 uh, but in Ragnarok Kratos's character I think evolved and grew even more so in this game and you really got to see Christopher Judge acting chop shine here and up next is Amy Fionn Edwards as Mio in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Uh, maybe not particularly my most favorite character from the game, but uh, Mio was definitely one of the best parts. And uh, her, what uh, Amy Edwards did with this one was, was really good. She had her emotional side really felt in this game. And how Mio was the the calming character, the glue that kept uh, this whole band together. Um, and I think uh, Amy did a spectacular job with this one. And for my best and most favorite performance in video games for 2022, has to go to Adam John Harrington as Sindri in God of War Ragnarok. I know quite a few people would say, you know, you usually default to Kratos because Christopher Dutch Judge did a very good job. Um, but uh, what Adam did with Sindri in this game was just above and beyond, uh, especially the way 
that uh, the writers wrote Sindri uh, allowed Adam to just shine quite well. Um, without going into any spoiler territory, uh, tragedy does befall in this game and you get to see Adam just completely show his level of voice acting in this one and um, was quite a treat to experience. Next we have best soundtrack score from a video game in 2022. And I'm talking about the soundtrack as a whole, so almost all the tracks. Uh, which ones did I revisit pretty much the most because I felt more of a connection with them or I just thought was overall just excellent sounding. So without a further ado, let's get going here. So at number three, we have Xenoblade Chronicles 3, uh, composed by Yasunori Mitsuda and many others. There's actually quite a few names involved in this one, uh, but the atmosphere that they were able to uh, established with the music in this one was extremely good and I really enjoyed all the the flute melodies that they uh, did with this one it was quite enjoyable Number two is Elden Ring by uh, Sukasa Saito. This one was probably the best I've heard from a from software game personally. I uh, really enjoyed the atmosphere that they established. Uh, they had some particularly really good tracks when it was involved with bosses, and they really uh, uh, put together a well-made soundtrack. And the best soundtrack score of 2022 for me uh, is going to God of War Ragnarok, composed by Bear McCreary. Um, like I said earlier, um, he knocked this one out of the park even more so than his uh, 2018 uh, composure with God, the God of War. Um, this one, uh, he just stepped it up. It felt really good. Uh, the way he kind of changed the tunes to match the more uh, incoming of the apocalypse, Ragnarok as you will, or that Fimble Winter was there, so things felt more frigid, more uh, cold. Um, I think he really made that felt through his soundtrack. And uh, he even teamed up with uh, Hozier for a song that is particularly quite good. And next we're going to do best single track from the video game soundtracks of 2022. And uh, I'm 
being more specific about certain tracks, uh, very individual tracks that you thought uh, were uh, pretty heavy hitters that you would listen to over and over again, ones that you will remember for a long time. Uh, so without further ado, number three is Find Your Flame from Sonic Frontiers by uh, Tomoyo Gotuni, uh, featuring Killing Quinn and Tyler Smith. Um, I really love the uh, heavy rock feel from this one. Uh, it was quite different, and it really honestly made the uh, Sonic Frontiers uh, soundtrack uh, stand out. Uh, it really um, kind of matched the quickness and the, the heavy hitting nature of Sonic Frontiers. Really enjoyed it. For the song of heart, not if you get it And no matter what the outcome, you better accept it I can cut like a sail, I can bury your face You're so no doubt for a second, just get out of my way But you can't even stay out, I'm not letting you go So take this as a lesson, cause it's all that we know Will the Number two is Elden Ring, the main theme from Elden Ring by uh, Tsukasa Saito. Um, when you first uh, boot up the game and you're at the title screen, this is the song that plays right there. And you're like, wow, um, okay, I I'm really digging this. I can see where we're going with this game. And um, that's one I always remember because every time I would turn on Elden Ring, I would sit there and let that song play for a bit before I continued my game. And number one goes to Blood Upon the Snow from God of War Ragnarok by Bear McCreary and uh, Hozier. Um, this one happens uh, kind of after the initial credit roll and it's during the true ending credits roll. And uh, this one I thought was very, very good and just uh, was, it, it matched the feeling and emotions that you were having uh, right before those credits started rolling. Um, I don't want to get into sp too much spoiler territory, but uh, it was rather emotional. Um, it made me feel a lot, and the song that went with it just amplified that feeling. And uh, that speaks volumes to me. The parent forced to eat its young before it grows Every bird gone on her Starving where the ground is froze, the winter sun rise red on white, like blood upon the snow. Like blood upon the All right, and next we have best action game for 2022 for me. And this was a lot of fun. I usually am not much of an action game guy because I find myself to be rather subpar at them. Um, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just getting older and I prefer my uh, turn-based uh, uh, RPGs, honestly. But uh, there were a lot of good ones this year and quite a few that I played and even platinumed a couple of these. So. Uh, number three is going to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. I love myself a good beat-em-up game, especially when it brings in some nostalgic value to it. And as a kid, I loved playing the Ninja Turtles games, uh, the arcade game and Turtles in Time or Hyperstone Heist. Loved all of those. And when Shredder's Revenge came out, it gave me that feeling of how much fun those beat-em-ups were and uh it just made it better you know giving you combat uh combo systems uh better uh character designs it was more fluid it was just a lot of fun 
and number two goes to Elden Ring. Uh, I already spoke a lot about this one, uh, probably from Software's best. Um, still liked Bloodborne quite a bit, but uh, I think Elden Ring surpassed it. Uh, just a lot of fun, and I think what a lot of the value comes from uh, in some of these From Software games is uh, the camaraderie I get with uh, playing um, these Souls-like games with my uh, very specific group of friends, and we play through them all. So when Elden Ring came out, we were all very heavily invested, absolutely loved it, played it multiple times a week until we uh, beat it multiple times because a lot of us wanted to see different endings. Um, it just was a very well put, to game, put together game. And some of the best bosses from any of the Souls games. And um, a couple really bad ones, but <laughs> I already talked about that. Uh, but the fight with uh, Melania was amazing. Very difficult, but fair. I loved it. And number one, I'm going to have to go with God of War Ragnarok. Uh, this one was uh, a combat engine that uh, vibed well with me. I felt in place. It was very good. The uh, whole narrative and story and character development was phenomenal. And the combat was there to match and was a lot of fun to use. Um, adding a third weapon was... Uh, a lot of fun. I liked switching between the weapons and found myself, who was normally a very big Leviathan Axe fan, uh, really having a lot of fun with the third weapon. So, um, fantastic action game. Up next, we have Best JRPG from 2022. Uh, there were a lot of JRPGs that came out, and unfortunately, there's quite a few I didn't get to, like uh, Live a Live here, or Harvestella. Let's keep going. Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion. One I really wanted to try, Diofield Chronicle. Star Ocean, The Divine Force. Square Enix was really on fire at the last half of uh, the year cause releasing all these cool smaller RPGs. Uh, we got Soul Hackers 2 and Tactics Ogre Reborn. I mean, there was a whole bunch of them. So, and then there was a bunch I played already too. But let's get on with it. And number three uh, goes to Trails from Zero. Uh, what a great entry uh, to show you and introduce you into the Crossbell arc. Uh, establishing this group of characters that you get to play with all of them from the beginning of the game so you really get to see them grow and learn about where they came from and all that the combat system was a lot of fun is very strategic you know your grid based system but but it still had that Legend of Heroes uh, flair to it um, absolute great game and I can't wait for Azure and at number two goes to Chained Echoes, a very cool, unique, brand new single man team JRPG. A uh, lot of fun. You know, a lot of people say, you know, that uh, turn based systems are getting kind of stale, but I don't know. There's people seem to be adding their own flair to them to keep them more engaging and a lot more fun. Uh, so that overdrive system really uh, keeps this one in check and it's a lot of fun. Um, good soundtrack, uh, really fun characters. Uh, it's just a beautiful game to boot. I mean, not everybody's into some of this pixel art style games, but uh, I am and I find when they do it right it is an absolute joy. And number one for best JRPG goes to Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Uh, I already talked this one to death. I absolutely loved it, especially the characters and the world that they established and the one they were coming up in and why was the world the way it was. It, it, it was really engaging. I loved the soundtrack. It, it matched well with, with uh, the atmosphere of the game. Um, I can't talk enough about how much I loved that cast of characters. Uh, it, it's rare when you have a large cast of characters that I like every one of them. And uh, this is one of the few where that's the case. I enjoyed it quite a bit. And 
And finally, we get to my game of the year for 2022. So let's uh, get this going. First off, I have to say that uh, uh, Chained Echoes very came very close to making it into this top three. It's that good of a game. Now, moving on. So number three is going to Elden Ring. Yes, uh, you know, halfway through the year, I'd say I would have easily said that. Yeah, this is game of the year. No problem. Uh, very good. Already talked to that, so I'm not going to speak much more to it. So at number two, Xenoblade 3. Fantastic. Um, held the number one spot for quite a long time until number one came out. And my 2022 game of the year goes to, probably no surprise from the way I'm talking from the earlier parts of this video, is God of War Ragnarok. And like I said before, when a game uh, really hits me emotionally, uh, that tells me that a very good story has been established. It's given me characters that I care a lot about. So when a game can do that, like Xenoblade 3 and God of War Ragnarok, it, it's going to stick with me for a long time, and I'm going to absolutely love it. Um, so, yeah, rare for me where an action game wins game of the year. Uh, but sometimes it does happen. I mean, there was... Uh, couple years ago when Hades won so uh, that's more of an action style game I'd consider so anyway yeah guys thanks for watching uh, let me know in the comments of what you thought and uh, what are your games of the year and as always thanks for watching